So anyone who's ever been in a browser is going to feel at home here, right? It's the classic layout. You have the tabs, you have the main window, and you have the address bar. The difference is that we have this little companion up here. And if you press the companion, it's going to open up and you have a sidebar. This sidebar and this companion, is gonna, it's going to be with you wherever you are on whatever page. And you're going to be able to give it context about one or several tabs. So one very simple example to, to illustrate this is like kind of extracting information from a page, right? So let me just Google something real quick. Okay, let me just try and find a little bit of a better page here. Here we go. Um, okay, so here's like a classic article, a list of companies, right? Yep. And so I can just ask Laura here, who's your uh, default companion, to extract some key information in a structured way. So I can ask her, like, let's extract a table with name, visitors, and you found it. And so now she's going to read the page and create this table for us uh, with that information. Which is taken from the, this uh, table that we have, like from this like report, which we are just found. It. Yes, exactly. So it's going to take it from the page. So there, there's a lot of tasks or job functions in general, where you go to a page and you extract a bunch of information and add it to a sheet, for example. Mm -hmm. And so once this is done by generating here, we're just going to be able to copy this. And, and I can even show you if I create a new sheet, I'll just be able to paste that in and it's going to like be the right format. Okay. So, so like one of the use cases that you can actually extract any data that you want from yes. any kind of yeah page. Exactly. And, and let's say I want to like get some quick follow-up information, right? So I can ask it like, which are the top 10 in terms of the web traffic? So here, meanwhile, are you competing with AI scripting, you know, startups or, or kind of other analytical startups that extract information and then you can actually, you know, do the engaging chat and ask about the content or you're competing with, you know, browser agent, which allows you to actually control the browser. Yeah. So the question you're kind of getting at there is kind of like this is dynamic between like local in the browser. Do I want the agent to be where I work or do I want it to be in its own container on some server somewhere? And I think there are a lot of situations where the kind of server approach is sufficient. I do, however, think that a lot of value comes from kind of me being in control and then just having these kind of bite-sized tasks, like micro tasks that it's going to help me complete quicker, like things that I would have done in my browser otherwise. And if you want to like outsource your entire workflow to, to something that's in the cloud, I think you should do that. I don't see a lot of evidence of people actually moving in that direction right now. And I think a lot of the time people just kind of want to, how would I say this? Like people don't want to be replaced. They want an Iron Man suit. Okay. So it's more of like that they're looking for an assistant and just like for helping them not for actually like doing the everything for them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so, yeah, so another thing you can do here, like you can have it do parallel web search tasks. So let's say I want to get, what, what information is not on this page? Amount of employees. So let's say I ask it, do web searches and find out how many employees each company has of these top. And they have limited number of beta, like pre-beta users that you're working with, or anyone can actually, you know, request to get access to it and then they'll have it. So currently we have a wait list that you can sign up to, and we try to bring more people on as quickly as possible, but we, we try to do it in a way that, that makes sense, so to speak, so that we can actually uh, accommodate those users. So here you can see that it's added another uh, column here with all that parallel information, which if I would have done that manually, uh, it would have taken quite some time. Actually, kind of like one interesting like use case which I saw was that that you were asking the strawberry to control lovable um, oh. browser. And for me, that was interesting because you know like lovable is like mean to be simple to be used, and then like you still kind of you know rely on strawberry you know to help you out. Yeah, kind of, it's a bit of a question that, you know, is there something, you know, should be much easier than laughable? Yeah. Um, so that demo was kind of too, we did that to kind of highlight this idea of having different agents on the web communicating, right? Yeah. So for example, there might be some information or some context that would help Lovable that Lovable doesn't have access to because it's in a different tab. So the demo was that we showed uh, one tab where you had your email, 
and it would show an email from a customer saying that like, hey, you're missing some information on your website. And then we would have a separate tab with Lovable and we would add both of those tabs into the context just by doing this like that. And then we would tell it to, hey, based on the, uh, the request from my email, ask Lovable to do edits on my website. Okay, and, okay. and then so it would create that prompt and input it for the user. And that might not be the, the quickest way to do it in practice right now, but it's more to kind of highlight this idea of like, what could be. Yeah, because for, like, for, like, for example, like me, like using Lovable, I also have the Figma tab in. So if, for example, I have like several other ones, ChatGPT, Cloud, like everything else, just because I take the prompt and use Figma and then like, like come into Lovable. But then, for example, if I would use Strawberry and then actually that it does kind of, I just type and then it knows where, like which tab to go and then kind of like come to the like, lovable. That would be actually an interesting thing. Hmm. Yeah. Perfect. So can we do like something more with this or is it just like, like you, you just ask and then it brings the research and then fill in the information? Yeah. So at the current stage, everything is kind of user prompted, right? So I'm doing something and I want to do it faster. Well, then. Um, I can open up this sidebar here at any time, any time on any website, and I'll be able to get assistance from, from the, the assistant. So this was kind of the read feature. I would love to show you kind of the interaction feature, right? Laura, your companion is actually interacting with the page for you. And so just to highlight this, like super simply, I would just could go to like google.com here and just have it press buttons, right? So I can create a new chat and I'll ask it to press the I'm feeling lucky button. Okay, so now she's noticing that, okay, I want, I want her to interact with the page. And then she goes into this browsing mode where you see this little purple border. And that's, did you see that? That's her little cursor. And now she's gonna evaluate and say, okay, task completed successfully and done. And obviously this is a super simple example, but what this entails is that you can ask her to do a series of clicks that you would normally do manually. Let's say you have a task that you need to do like four or five times per week, and it's always the same and you hate doing it and it's super repetitive. You can just teach Laura or any other companion you have uh, to do that. And so the way you do it is that you can actually press this drop down here and press teach companion. And so now you're going to be able to teach her a skill. So the way that works is that you say, okay, when I ask you to get the monthly website report okay, or analytics report, then I want you to do this. So let's say we call this like weekly user report. And then I can actually record my screen and say, Hey, Laura, when I ask you to do the weekly user report, I want you to open a tab. I want you to go to Google analytics. And then I want you to click on this, add this filter and extract this uh, data and get back to me in a table format, for example. And after I recorded my skill, she's going to think for a bit. And then she's going to learn how to do that based on like me showing her exactly where to click. And that way I've, I've taught my, my browser to automate tasks that I don't want to do. Okay. But, but then also it means that you need to have integration with so many other tools. For example, let's say that if, you know, I want my agent to do a report on how many calls or meetings I had from Calendly. So it will just go check the Calendly, check my calendar and then kind of take it. So, or, or like there's no integration needed. It's just a simple access that it can have. Your companions can visit any website that you can visit. So it can open tabs autonomously and do it in the background for you. Which means that if I ask my companion to go to my Calendly, give me a report, she's going to be able to like open up a new tab, write Calendly and do that just as if I would do it in my local browser. Okay, and okay. since I'm already signed into Calendly in my local browser, there's no like weird, like I don't have to give my passwords to some, you know, uh, some agent on a server somewhere, everything is locally. All the cookies uh, that keep me signed into a service are stored locally in the browser. Yeah. So does it actually cost lots of energy consumption or somehow you need to have compute power or, or, or how is it possible just to do all these things locally in your computer? So it's all locally in the computer and it, it will take as much energy as if you were to open the tab and do it yourself. So really there's no trade-off there. Okay. Perfect. perfect. Thank you so much, man, for the demo. One thing I would also mention is this kind of uh, research capability that we have. So you asked me earlier, what are the most 
kind of common use cases and who are using it. The the early users who are getting the absolutely like the most value out of it, the people who are emailing me and saving, saying like, this is saving me 10 hours per week, right? Those are often people who need to do a lot of research on a daily basis. So they need to go through like hundreds of tabs in a single workday and extract all that information and create a report for someone or whatever, or they, they add data into a CRM and or, or stuff like that. So what you can do is that you can ask your companion, once again, like do more research on the products of each of these companies. This is the old chat that we had before in the beginning of this demo. And so when I ask her to do this, she's going to be able to open up more tabs autonomously and search through the web for me. So I don't have to give her instructions like in the previous example, like go to this exact page. She's going to go out and try to figure that out on her own based on the instructions that I have. So you can see up here that we have this little button, AI tabs, and all of these are different button, no, sorry, different tabs that she's opening to do research to try and find the information that I'm looking for. And so just in minutes, your companion can go through like hundreds of tabs, which of course you would never be able to do manually in that time. And she can go through tabs or, or reach any website that you would be able to use. And that includes pages like LinkedIn because you're already signed in there. Okay. There are two outputs as I see now. So it's like you do research. It also reads the data kind of the data so it can actually give you a report which you can use it i assume and then the second one is that you just train your little agents and then they do like your manual work so it's just two kind of outputs in the end exactly so that's kind of what i was talking about in the beginning about uh, the read functionality and the interaction capabilities okay this is amazing and really like your imagination is kind of the limit here in what you can do because we give you the tools to say hey like what happens if we essentially duplicate you. Like what happens if we give you all these different agents in your browser? Like you can teach it to do anything that you would normally do. Really like conceptually, that's limitless. You could you could become a X person or a hundred X version of yourself. And um, have you thought of the business model, for example, how would you charge? Because it's like locally, you know, like hosted and then it's kind of like license based or what's your thinking around that? Mm. Yeah. So we we always keep the basic browser functionality for free, right? So we're never going to say like, hey, you can't open more tabs because you haven't paid. We then, when it comes to the AI related features, we do offer free usage up to a certain amount, but as with any AI product, and it's going to cost us on the back end if you're going to use the AI capabilities because we use the APIs of other providers. So we have a pricing plan that is still being determined exactly how that's going to look. But essentially, after a certain amount of free user usage per month, you're going to pay to, to use it more. And of course, that's up to you. Like If you feel like you're getting a lot of value and saving a lot of time with the browser, then... Uh, then feel free to use our paid plan. But if it's not that much and you don't really reach that limit, then it's not going to be a problem for you. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, because there's so many AI tools like coming up every every week. And what I see is that like there's a pattern of why purchasing, you know, that you just like why buying it because you saw something new and you're, wow, let me try it. And then like something next, you know, comes up, pops up. So just kind of, you know, my question is here that from your experience working with the startups, building your own ventures and, and now Strawberry, who do you think that will win in this AI game? Because there are so many agents. I assume that there might be also browser type of agents that you're offering. So who in the end will win this game? It's hard to say that there's going to be one winner. I think, I think there's going to be a lot of specialized agents who have the specific tools that are, are needed to be good at a specific area. Right. So I think all of those companies who are able to create really helpful agents that are hyper specialized, I think, are going to be big winners in this. There's a lot of talk about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a lot of talk of talk about the base models being commoditized. It seems to be going in that direction. And there seems to be more and more indicators that the winners are going to be in the application layer. So I can. I can tell you that much, but specific companies, hard to say. Do you feel that at some point 
you guys will not, you know, cover all the agents, but actually, you know, focus on one or two agent tech use case that the strawberry could actually be excellent in that. So what we think is that the future of in the internet is going to look radically different than it's done for the last 20 years. So historically, what you've seen with web pages is that they're going to be there. They, they have been mostly static. Right. You had you've had dynamic pages, but it's like it's always been this kind of like, okay, it's this window and then there's text in it and you do something, you press some buttons or whatever. The future, we think, is going to be this like huge network of like millions or billions of agents that are hyper specialized who are like communicating with each other. And we think that the the interpretation tool for that is very different than the interpretation tool for web pages. Mm -hmm. So the browser is an interpretation tool for web pages. But what happens when the web is agents, right? And we don't know what that's going to look like yet. But we think that the browser is a great starting point for kind of being your portal into this world of agents who can work for you. Yeah. And also like that brings a question of that, you know, how humans need to rethink and relearn how to interact with each other or how to use the internet in general. Like, do you need, you know, have like LinkedIn profile? Do you need to be like socially present if it's all agents interacting with each other? So I think, yeah, like it, it really questions everything. And then there should be new type of every social network or, or technology. Great. So we have the results now. Exactly. So a few minutes went by and now it's done this kind of manual work like by having read like hundreds of pages and trying to get information about the different products of all these different companies and giving me a report. And this was a very like simple question, right? But it still kind of gave me stuff that I didn't even ask for that it thought would be relevant. So for example, pricing, like what different pricing plans do these different companies have? And also these different like key features, what's notable, stuff like that. Uh, but obviously you can also give it much more complex tasks. And one of those tasks could even be like, find me like 20 uh, engineers within this very specific niche in this country. And then it's going to go out and do that using different social medias and pages and stuff. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for the demo. Yeah, of course.